Demonstrations continue in Haiti, where many people remain without housing two and a half years after the earthquake. Residents from the neighborhood of Jalousi near Pechonville marched after the government announced plans to demolish their homes to build a flood protection project. According to the International Organization for Migration, nearly 400,000 Haitians still do not have a permanent home, and residents of the tent camps have reported gender violence, poor sanitation, and forced evictions. For more, we're joined by Susana Ferreira. She's a freelance journalist based in Port-au-Prince, and she joins us by mobile phone. Welcome to FSRN. Hi, thanks very much for having me. Protesters have drawn attention to a particular area south of the capital and the housing situation there. What is this area and what are conditions like there? The people protesting today live in an area called Jalousie, uh, and it is just just nestled on the side of, uh, of a mountain right by a, a, a fairly well-off suburb just south of Port-au-Prince called Petionville. Um, it's a very densely packed area. There are small concrete houses and structures basically stacked one on top of the other throughout the mountainside. There's another settlement right next to it called Mourne L'Hopital. And uh, this is the third protest, I believe, that residents of, of this zone have had regarding um, a, a plan that's been announced to demolish their homes, basically, and relocate them. And at this point, is it clear where those residents would go and and what the timeline is on on a demolition plan? There's now talks of moving people to either Montcabri, which is just east of the capital, where a number of houses have been set up. They've been built by a Dominican company, and they're just sitting empty there in rows, or moving them south to uh, Gressier, to a a small community, just a, a maybe a half hour to an hour south of of Port-au-Prince. Nothing has happened yet. Um, And I think that's in part, what I'm being told is that's in part why people are protesting today. They're waiting for news. They're not being told what's happening. Um, They're not being told whether their homes are going to be destroyed and whether they're going to be uprooted. For for some of those people, it'll it'll be the, the, the second time or maybe even third time being uprooted since the earthquake. Now, amid this um, confusion about what exactly the government's plans are or or where uh, people in this particular place would go, uh, the government of President Michel Martelly has pointed to uh, an overall program titled the 16-6. They say uh, 30,000 residents of six large camps would be settled to original, repaired, 16 neighborhoods. Uh, how extensive is that program, and what's the status of, of that program now? I went to check on one of the bigger areas for 166 the other day, uh, which is Shamama, right in front of the National Palace, and there were just a few tents left of, uh, of, of all of the many tents that had covered that area, that camp before, or several camps, I guess. And uh, I'm being told that today the very last family is leaving. I'm not sure under what conditions, but apparently they've, they've, they've found a, a place to live. On paper, 166 is a great program, and as far as I know, it's still continuing, but it's really not tackling the majority of the camp population. And that number, as we noted earlier, according to UN figures, f- nearly 400,000 Haitians living in temporary camps more than two and a half years after the earthquake. You've also reported on an area, a different area, north of Port-au-Prince called Titanien. It's known for having a large cemetery, and it's where people have struggled to build temporary housing. At the time, and this was in January on the anniversary of the earthquake, and it was published in Time magazine, you quoted Haiti's director of public works, saying that reconstruction is being carried out as though the earthquake never happened. And he said this temporary housing, it could be uh, causing long-term problems in the country. Where does this rebuilding effort on a, on a broader scale, where does it stand now? Reconstruction is being carried out for the most part, as though the earthquake never happened. Um, people are moving to areas like the Jalousie and like Mon Lopitan, um, but they're also moving in, in, in greater numbers, or in great numbers, I should say, to places like Titania, the place that I wrote about in Time Magazine in January. Um, as people are being evicted from their camps, or pushed out for other reasons because there aren't any services or because life has become unbearable there, 
They're moving to these places and pitching tents and in, in, in many cases trying to set up more permanent structures in areas where there is no water, where there are floodplains, where there are near deforested mountainsides, where, where landslides can come and damage their homes and, and even kill them or injure them. We're out of rainy season for the moment, but we are in the middle of cyclone season, which will continue until until October. So that is a major concern. People, a great number of people died in, in, in April with the rains, with flooding. So this is something that should be on people's minds as, as they're rebuilding. But, but not only that, it should be on the authorities' minds as they're watching a lot of this auto reconstruction, as they're watching people move to these places and construct with the same shoddy materials and practices that killed them two and a half years ago. That's Susanna Ferreira. She's a freelance journalist in Port-au-Prince. She joined us to discuss the housing crisis in Haiti.